All right. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the basic concept of integrating a LEGO gyroscope sensor. Now, the gyroscope sensor gives you one thing, and that is rotational velocity. How fast and in what direction it's spinning. But using that, uh, along with the internal clocks, we can calculate a heading, like a compass heading, using our gyroscope. So we'll need a couple different things. The first main thing we'll need is time. We'll also get the rotational velocity off of the sensor. And when we combine these two in the right way, that will give us a heading. So now, for this example, just because we're going over the concept, I'm going to use simple numbers that are easy to do the math quickly in our heads. Uh, the computer will be doing this on a much faster and smaller scale, but the math is exactly the same. So if we have a couple different time intervals, so we have 0, 1 second, 2 seconds, and three seconds, and let's say at zero seconds, the we take a reading of our sensor, and it gives us that we're spinning ten degrees per second. And then, on at one second, it's also giving us ten degrees per second. Makes sense. So now we've take our ending time. So. 1 minus our beginning time, 0, to give us the length of this time, which we could easily see as 1, but just to make sure, we know our ending time minus our beginning time is 1. So that's this period of time. This happens for one second. And then what we can do is we calculate the average of these two velocities. So in this case it would be 10 plus 10 divided by 2, which happens to give us 10. So then what we do is we just take to calculate our heading is we take our velocity times our time. So we've got 10 times 1 equals 10. So at the end of, oh, and I should say at the very beginning, we give ourselves a heading of zero, just as a reference point. So after one second, our heading is 10. Does that make sense? So now we'll do it again here between one and two. So we'll start off again taking our ending time, so two minus our beginning time which is 1, and we get 1 second again. And then let's say at 2 seconds we read a velocity of 5 this time. So now we've got our 1 second interval. We started the interval moving at 10, rotating at 10 degrees per second, ended it rotating at 5 degrees per second. So we'll take the average of the two, 10 plus 5 over 2, which is equal to 7.5. And then we'll take our average rotational velocity times our time. 7.5 times 1 is equal to 7.5. And then we will add that to our previous heading. So 10 plus 7.5 is equal to 17.5. And then, so we'll have at two seconds a heading of 17.5. And then let's say at three seconds, we're at five, now we're going to be at zero. So at three seconds, we're going to have a rotational velocity of, oops, zero. There we go. 
So, same process. 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. We've got our two different times. Ending minus beginning to give us our time interval. And we're going to average our two uh, velocities. So we've got 5 plus 0 over 2, which is equal to 2.5. Then we multiply our time by our speed. So we've got 2.5 times 1 is equal to 2.5. And then if we go back over to here, 17.5 plus 2.5 is equal to 20. So we calculated our heading and if the computer is doing this really really fast then we'll get something that looks like a current heading. It won't be perfect but it'll be really really close when the computer is running this as fast as it can and instead of having one second intervals we'll have like tenth of a second intervals. So now, we've seen how this works with everything is positive. So when we get a negative number, we want to make sure that our formula still works. So if we have time rotational velocity and a current heading, we've got I'm just going to fill in what we had last time, which how we finished up our last sheet, which was 3 rotational velocity of 0 and a heading of 20. So now, if we have a 4, if we measure it again at 4, only now we have a rotational velocity of negative 5. How does that change everything? So the time still works the same. We take our ending time minus our beginning time. Still spits out 1. And then we average our two velocities. So we've got 0 plus the negative 5 divided by 2, which gives us our negative 2.5. Then we multiply this by our time, so negative 2.5 times 1 is equal to negative 2.5. And then we take our previous heading plus our change in heading, which is negative 2.5 is equal to 17.5. So we can see we don't ever have to change this addition sign because the rotational velocity comes back negative when you're spinning the other direction. So we have a new final heading of 17.5. Now we want to check to make sure this works over any time interval. So for ease we're going to do 4.5 seconds. So if we're taking a reading here and just to continue, we'll get a negative 10. And what that'll do, so we'll start off by doing 4.5 minus 4, which equals 0 0.5. So we have a half second interval this time. We'll average our two velocities, which will give us negative 5 plus negative 10 divided by 2 which is equal to negative 7.5. And now we'll multiply this by our new time interval. So negative 7.5 times, in this case, 0 0.5, which gives us negative 3.75. And then if we take our previous heading, 17.5 plus 
our new negative 3.75. That'll give us 13.75. So we'll end up with a new heading of 13.75. And there we go. We just saw that even when we use negative numbers and whatever time intervals we happen to use, our formula and our process still works.